Tundra again, see if I can get some more speed out of it. Wing struts have been replaced with two times three millimeter carbon fiber tubes on each side. And see if that'll keep the wings from flexing. I think that's what's causing my pull and dive to the right. I don't know what's causing it, so I'm, I'm just gonna trying anything and everything here. Anyway, here we go, see what happens. Needs trim, a whole heap and lot of it. altitude because I need altitude to recover if it starts pulling I have no control over the plane until it slows down beyond a certain point and then I have control so anyway we'll turn pick up a little bit of speed there and then we'll give it the beans oh it's so much better pulling to the right problem fixed Here, does not show me maximum temperature. Yeah, it does. I gotta kind of fly at the same time, though. Uh, 82, so about 84 miles an hour, probably. Uh, we'll go around one more time. We can get a little bit of dive going to gain some speed. I know that's cheating. I'm flying downwind and I'm diving, but hey, I don't care. This isn't any official speed test here. It's just me having fun. <laughs> 88, so that's 90 miles an hour. But yeah, it flies pretty stable now, so I should be able to do better than that. Let's do a, a good dive here. Got to give it a little bit of a aileron, but that's just a tiny amount compared to before I had to go all I had. And it was still... Still not hitting 100, you know. Maybe 92 or something. See the plane very good. Are we going to hit 100 with this plane at all? Still says 90, so that's like 92 miles an hour. I think that might be pretty much where it tops out. I think maybe I have to go to bigger batteries so I have more voltage to play with. Still says 90, so that's pretty much it. I guess 90, probably two miles an hour. Ah, uh, yeah. Right. It still flies like a tundra. have to fly fast, it can still fly slow. Pick up a bit of speed because it's coming downwind here. Get a couple clicks of up trim because it wants to dive a little bit. Switch it to some lower rates so we got finer control here. 
Oh yeah. Mm. Place like a tundra should, nice and sedate. And we got a car coming, so we gotta wait so we can land. Yeah, for anybody that wants to want to go, oh you're landing across the road, that's so dangerous. Well not really, because I can see and hear. So no sweat. Get a idea where my runway is, aka my driveway. It's a crosswind entrance. We're coming down from crosswind landing here, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's not the easiest to land. Landing away from you because you don't have any idea of the speed, but we're down, so no problem. That's why I purposely put it down in the grass instead of the driveway in case I had a prop strike, which I did. Um, guessing the grass saved a proper amount of damage. And yeah, not the ideal landing, but hey, that's what I got. I don't want to land into the road because that's just stupid. <laughs> Uh, one shot landing. You either land or you crash. Those are two options there. Gotta make it right on the first try or not at all. So, anyway, as far as prop goes, it's beautiful, no prop damage. So we just cut some grass with it, no big deal. Uh, like I guess yeah, the telemetry says 90 for speed, so I'm gonna assume this GPS would probably say 92. Uh, let's see what it says. 91. So, still not getting anywhere close to 100 miles an hour. But, at least now that I've solved the problem of the plane wanted to go all kinds of bunkers on me, we can uh, maybe uh, do something about that. I'll have to look at my telemetry log and see what the battery voltage does at speed. I'm guessing it probably droops pretty bad, so put a couple of big batteries in, get rid of the voltage drop, and this should get us in the right direction. Might not hit 100 yet, but hey, we'll find out. Running a, I'm running a 12 by 10 prop. So, I don't, know, I don't know what else they make. I don't want to go any bigger or more pitch on a 12 inch prop. I don't know if they make an 11 by 11 square prop. I don't know, I'm assuming they don't really make anything like 11 by 12. So, short of changing motors to higher KV, I think battery voltage, maybe one more prop size is what we got to go with here. So oh, we might never hit 100 miles an hour in this thing. It's not the most aerodynamic airframe by any means. So we got, you know, of course we got the flaps, flaps down, but we got right now, like I said, a whole bunch of scaffolding that I put up to stiffen up the wing, keep it from flexing. We got these huge wheels dragging and. Uh, I don't know, kind of, yeah, we got like a flat bottom airfoil here, pretty much, I think, so. I don't know, yeah, it's flat-ish. So the airfoil isn't the best, by any means, either. For speed. Nothing is the best for speed, obviously, because that's not, not what it's meant for. <laughs> but, yeah. Take the sunglasses off so I can see the screen on the camera here. I'll see if I can point it at things. Why well, is the radio still on anyway? There we go. Turn it off. Yeah, it's not the screen. Here we go. But yeah, as you can see, I got scaffolding added to it. So there's a three millimeter carbon fiber tubes propped up down here by a two millimeter. It's 
of carbon fiber. All attached together by some uh, string and, uh, and some CA glue. The carbon fiber is CA'd into the foam. I dropped some CA along the carbon fiber and you know, along the crack there. Some super thin stuff so it soaked in. And I kind of smeared on some power tack and all the other places to get a bit more support. So, anyway. So, yeah, still not 100 miles an hour. A little bit disappointing. <laughs> but I am kind of pleased with the fact that it's at least flyable at speeds now. So I got that going for me. So now we have a chance to even make some headway here.